Hi, this is Nilton from craftofprogramming.com and in this video I'm going to give you a overview of IntelliJ IDEA 2018.3 and one of the things we're going to cover in this overview is projects and modules. Let's get started. Okay, so when you open IntelliJ, uh, this is basically what you have. Uh, the main window is called the um, editor. And here, um, as you can see, you can maxi maximize the editor. And you can switch between, you know, editors. Then you have a, um, what, what are called tool windows. And you use the switcher to basically activate the um, tool window uh, or you can just use alt number so alt one you see the project window and the project window basically displays the modules and the structure of the project you have the structure of the type and with the structure, you can basically see the um, structure of the class, you know, the ty the fields or any inner classes and the methods and so on. And you can obviously, you know, tweak these. You can sort by visibility and um, it's quite a, a bit of uh, options here. There is the favorites window and the favorite window basically displays bookmarks and breakpoints that you set in the code. So I have a bookmark set here and I have a breakpoint there as well. Then there is the version control window, which you see here. You can see the local changes as well as logs. There is a to-do window where, as the name implies, it shows the uh, to-dos and you can obviously jump to a to-do and you've got the um, build uh, window so in this particular case this is a maven project so you can see that there is a um, maven window here and there is also class hierarchy for the uh, type that is currently displayed in addition to that there is uh, something called the uh, toolbar or the tool windows button you have here the status bar that displays the uh, current um, line ending the file encoding this is basically the uh, space character whether using spaces or tab this is the branch that you currently on this is used for inspection, we'll cover this later. And this is basically just a um, memory indicator, this is optional. One other window did not cover, it's called event log, and event log basically displays all messages related to, you know, typically errors that may happen. So, so another thing that you can see here is at the top, this is called the navigation bar, and the navigation bar basically enables you to um, basically explore the um, package all the way up to directories and the actual um, module. So let's move on and I would like to talk about a core concept in IntelliJ called project and modules. So a project is essentially a container of modules and a project defines settings that can be shared across multiple modules. So, for example, in this case, this project is defining version 1.8 of the JDK, is defining this level, language level, lambda 8 and type annotations, and it's defining this output for the uh, compiler uh, you know build so modules are independent entities 
and modules defined their own settings. So in a module, as you can see, you can define your own language level and this may or may not be the uh, same as the um, project level setting. A module define a um, can override its uh, output path or it can inherit from the project and a module defines its own dependencies. Also a module may depend on another module. So in this particular example for this killer app application, the killer app application contains three modules and the server module has a dependency on the killer app service, which is another module. So a module uh, contains something very important called a content root. A content root is basically a folder where you store your source code. And the way you configure the content root contents is by marking the um, directories of folders inside that content root by categories which are here. So in this particular example of the server module, the server module is defining this content root which again is just a folder in the file system that contains the source code and this module contains a Java folder which is marked as a source folder. It contains a resource folder which is marked as such. It contains a Java folder inside the test which is marked as test and a resource folder which is marked as test resources. So the way to do that is you basically right click and you mark it as such. So source, test, resource and so on. Okay? And the way IntelliJ uses these categories is basically for um, when a project is built, the Java, uh, the folders marked as sources are going to be built or compiled into an output which is going to be different than a folder marked as test. A folder marked as resources, and resources typically is a folder that would contain property files, image files, and so on. These, um, the, the contents of these folders typically are just, uh, when you build the application, are just copied as is onto the final build artifact. And the same thing for test resources. It's basically just passed to the runtime so that you can run tests and they are not compiled. So the way to mark that is very simple. Again, it's just right click and you mark that folder as whatever you want to do. Okay. One interesting feature of um, a module is that a module may have multiple content routes. So in this particular example of a service module, I have defined here a module that contains two content routes. So there is this content route. Again, a content route is just a folder that contains the sources for a particular module. This module contains two routes, this route and this route. Okay, this is just for an illustration of the capabilities of a module. Moving on, on the module um, um, definition, you have path. And path is basically whether you want to inherit the um, path defined at the project level, which we saw is defined here, or if you want the module to define its own output path. Dependencies, again, you can basically um, inherit the um, JDK from the project or you can define a 
module specific um, JDK. And in this particular example, I'm showing that the this version of the JDK is different than the project, and it's different than a a another module. This is to highlight that modules are completely independent entities from each other, even though they are grouped uh, as part of a project. So um, let's explore the dependencies because this is important. So this the dependencies tab defines how this particular model mod module it's going to be built. So obviously because we set the JDK as 10 then this module has a dependency with the JDK 10. It obviously has a dependency with its sources. That's the main source code for the module. For the sake of example and again to illustrate another feature of module I have defined a another module here as a dependency for this module and um, there, is, there are two more um, uh, dependencies here which I have added to illustrate the concept of a scope so IntelliJ modules basically have four different scopes so the basic, uh, the default scope is compile and compile basically means that you're going to create a dependency at compile time and at runtime. So this, um, every dependency that is, that has a scope compile, it's going to be added to the, as a, in, in, uh, to the runtime class path. A dependency with scope test is basically only used by test code. It's not going to be included uh, with the um, final build application. A dependency that has a scope of runtime, it's only going to be included in the runtime class path. It's not going to be used during the uh, compilation. And finally, a dependency with scope provided is used for build and test a project. So one thing I want to show as well here is that modules are grouped um, inside a project. So they can be grouped. So now let's talk about the concept of libraries. Libraries in IntelliJ are defined at the module level at the project level or at the global level. So the way you add a library to a module is by selecting the module, dependencies tab, you click the plus button and you select library, new library, for example from Maven and for the sake of the example let's for example search for the Mukito core library Okay, so let's pick the latest version. So after you uh, download the library, IntelliJ prompts you to um, ask you at which level do you want to define the library. So you have three options again, it's module, project or global. Again, a module library, it's, a, it's basically applicable only for that module or any module that depends on that module. A project library would be available to all the modules of that project and a global library would be available across all projects and all modules of those projects. So for this particular example because this is a testing library let's add it at the global library level click OK and we see that now it's been added at the global level and we obviously can use the library here and we would set it at its correct um, scope which is test and we press apply and if we come here to global libraries then we now see that we have the um, Mokito library libraries at the project level again are available for uh, to be used by all the modules of that project 
So this concludes the overview of uh, projects and modules in IntelliJ IDEA. If you found these videos useful, please consider subscribing to the channel and leave it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. This is Nilton from Craft of Programming.